How do antidepressants make you fall down? Hi, I'm Dr. Silva, and today I'm going to talk about how antidepressants make you fall down. The most common mechanism is called orthostatic hypotension. It's also called orthostasis. And what it involves, and it's common, lots of medications can cause it. And what the pathophysiologic mechanism is this. When you get up from a recumbent position, whether you're lying flat, in bed, say, or you're sitting down, and more commonly probably sitting down for most people, and you get up too quickly, few people jump out of bed in the mornings, but plenty of people will stand up real quick from, from a seated position. And if you're on a medication that is causing this side effect, or if you're just dehydrated, it can also occur just spontaneously, then the blood pressure in the head drops. Even just a few inches when you're standing up, particularly if you're doing it quickly, is enough of a change in pressure that you lose pressure to the cranium, to the brain, and that can result in dizziness and in the furthest extreme, actual syncope, actual fainting. Of course, falling is a huge risk, even if you don't faint, particularly for the elderly, and so there could be some pretty serious consequences of falling down because of this particular side effect, because of orthostasis. Lots of medications cause it. They're commonly prescribed. As far as antidepressants, trazodone jumps to mind. It's very commonly prescribed, older antidepressant, but it's used as a sleep aid. It can do it very, very commonly, as well as the tricyclic antidepressant agents, all of those medications in the first generation. And they all do it by blocking the actions of norepinephrine, adrenaline, which is necessary to affect vasoconstriction. So when you have impairment of the sympathetic nervous system in that regard, in terms of clamping down when the blood pressure drops, then you, the blood vessels, the arterioles to the cranium don't constrict quickly enough, you lose pressure, and the result is a woozy, heady, lightheaded feeling that in the extreme could cause you to lose consciousness, but probably more commonly causes people to fall down. So what can you do about it? What can you do to prevent it? Actually, it's very, it's quite preventable. The side effect may be there and it is dose dependent. So the more, the more milligrams of a medication that you take, the more likely you're going to have the, this side effect, the more severe it can be. But first of all, number one, number one, number one, get up slowly, move slowly. Give your body a chance to react. It will react. The, the reflex is not completely blocked. You have baroreceptors, particularly in the carotids, where the carotids bifurcate. Those are cells that are actually like barometers. They actually measure the pressure of the blood. If you give your body a chance to react, then it will slowly come to. So the problem is jumping up. Now, most people don't jump out of bed, but it's always a good idea in the mornings, especially after you've been lying flat for a long time, especially getting up from bed after you've been sleeping for a long time. It has to do with how long you've been in the recumbent position and how quickly you get up. Those are the two most important factors. So if you just take it slow, and it probably is more common when people are just sitting on the couch, say, and they get up real quick to go across the room to the kitchen and get something or they jump up to go to the bathroom, they can feel this sudden loss of pressure and this sudden dizziness. And so staying hydrated is important as well. If you're dehydrated, that's certainly a risk factor. And those people that experience it without being on medication, that's the number one cause because they're dehydrated, especially if they're older or if they have some other, other things going on with their health. Young people can get away with a lot. But how do you prevent orthostasis, clinical, the clinical manifestations of orthostatic hypotension, get up slowly, especially if you've been laying down for a long time, and stay hydrated. Those are the most important. Now, if you don't want to fall, there are other things you can do to be mindful, particularly in your bedroom in the middle of the night. If you leave stuff out on the floor in the path between the bed and the toilet, that's a fall risk. If you don't have any night lights on, it's pitch black in the middle of the night when you might have to get up to empty your bladder, that's a fall risk. As we get older, we lose our coordination. We lose our balance. That just is one of the things that degrades over time in most people as your brain ages. And it may not be clinically significant until you're in your 70s or 80s or what have you, but the six-month mortality rate following a broken hip is not good. 
So those are things you can do to prevent falling and just be mindful of this particular side effect. Ask your doctor and drink plenty of water and just be careful. Move slowly. <laughs>